Hello and welcome everybody. This is Roland Hartman from Gravig in Motion and in this tutorial I want to show you how you can customize my Liquid Logo After Effects template. First of all I want to open up my project file. So let's go to Open Project and then I will navigate to my Liquid Logo folder and take the AEP file and open it up. If you use an After Effects version above After Effects CS5, then you will probably get this short information. So don't worry, this is no mistake, no error. It just means that the template was created with an older version of After Effects and that it has been converted. And if you click OK, After Effects will convert it. Then you probably will get this second information, which says that this project uses a trap code particular version, an earlier trap code particular version. and you also can convert this by simply clicking OK, so this is no mistake too. If you get an error message that says some references are missing, then you probably do not have Trapcode Particular installed on the system. So I want to mention this in the beginning. To use this template, probably the Trapcode Particular plugin has to be installed on your system. Okay, now let's start with the customization. Customization is really quick, really easy. First of all, you can of course enter your logo. So therefore you move to the logo composition and should be already open in the timeline. If it's not already open, you can find it right here in the project panel here. So I will quickly toggle my transparency grid because then I can see a little bit better what's going on here. So first of all, you see in this composition, there is only a text layer. The text layer is only a placeholder. If you want to use a text or title instead of a logo, you can simply double click on this text and now you can type in your text. Then you can of course change your font, your look, and you're good to move on. If you want to use a logo, then please go to file and go to import, import file, and then navigate to the folder with your logo. I will take my logo here and import it. Perfect. Now you can drag your logo on top of the placeholder and you can disable or delete the placeholder. In my case, you see that my logo is too big, so I will scale it down. And you see that in this composition, I have this green square and I would recommend that your logo should not exceed these borders here of the green square. If it does, it's no problem. It will still work, but it probably won't look that nice anymore. So my advice for this template is keep the logo rather small, a little bit smaller, and it will look better. And this is why I also added this information for the good result, keep your logo small. So in my case, I will scale it to about 34, 35%, and I will move it up a bit because I also want to add my subtitle here. So I will move it up just by 10 pixels here. Okay, if I go to my render composition now, you will see that now immediately everything changes and this liquid here is taking over the colors from my logo. So whatever you put into the logo composition will then get liquefied. Now let's move our time cursor back here. And what I can do now is I can set up my paint splatters. To set up the paint splatters, you simply enter the logo paint setup composition. Again, if it's not already open here in your timeline, then you can find it up here in the project window. Simply double click it to enter it. And now again, I will toggle my transparency grid to make this a little bit more obvious. And now I can start playing around with my splatters. Included in this template are a few paint splatter elements. And you see, we have actually three different splatters here. These are PSD, so Photoshop files. And then we have this small paint splatter movie, which is animated. And of course we have the brush stroke, which is used to reveal the subtitle. But for now, let's deal with these paint splatters and let's create a nice look here. So let's select the first paint splatter here and let's see where we can put this. And I will simply put this down here. You can also, of course, change the scaling by pressing S on the keyboard and then simply change the values. And you can, of course, also press R on your keyboard and change the rotation of the splatters. So you can simply create a new look. So in my case, I will put it around here. And then I go to my effect controls panel. If this is not open in your layout, then you can, of course, access it through the Windows menu and you can find here the effect controls panel. And you see that in this effect controls panel, which I now disabled, let me enable it again, there is a fill effect on these layers. So through this fill effect, I can colorize them. And therefore I simply take the color picker. And in this case, I want to use 
this green color here. So I will color this green. So let's move on to the next paint split. I will make this maybe a little bit bigger, like so. And again, take the color picker, take a color here. Okay, next one. I will put this in here. Take the color picker, make this brighter. Next one is did that one. I will make this a little bit bigger, so I scale it up a bit. Um, bring it in here and change the color to a little bit of a darker color. Very nice. Now let's move on to the next one, which is this one here. I want to bring this in here and scale this up a bit. Maybe also I will rotate this a bit so that it's looking like so. That looks pretty good. And now I want to colorize this too. And I will make it like this yellow here. Okay. And now you see I have two more to go. If you do not want to use all of them, no problem. You can simply turn them off. You can, of course, if you want to use even more paint elements, then you can, of course, create duplicates simply by choosing whatever you want to duplicate and then pressing Ctrl and D. That's how you can create another instance of your paint splatter. So I will delete this and I will set up this one as my last element here. And I want to rotate this a bit. So maybe like so. And also scale this up a bit so it's a little bit bigger. And now we can put this here and I can change the color to green. And now I will, this one already has a nice color. I only want to position it a little bit better, like so. Perfect. And now you see I have my paint splatter, which is above my logo right now. And I will take this, put it down here and give it a nice green color. Okay, perfect. So this is a setup of the paint elements. You see, uh, you have to do this by hand. There is unfortunately no other possibility to get a nice paint layout. And of course, if you do not want any paint splatters in your logo reveal, in the final reveal, then you can simply turn these off. But before I show you that, I will go to the render comp and now you see what is the outcome. You see the result, it looks really cool. And if I turn these off in my logo paint setup composition, let's simply click on all these eye switches then you get a clean logo reveal without these paint splatters. So it really depends what you want. So I will use them, I will leave them active. And now I can move on to my subtitle. Subtitle is very easy to customize. First of all, you have a text layer and you can of course enter your title, double click on the text layer, enter your title. Oops, I made a few mistakes. So enter your title. And of course you can change the size of this brush here. So if you select the brush layer and press S for scale, then you see that I scaled this a bit. And if you want this to be a little bit smaller, you can scale it on the X axis and of course also on the Y axis. So depending on how big your title is, you can adjust the size of this brush. So I will leave it approximately this size. And what you also can do is you can change the color of your brush here. To change the color you simply select the layer and then you have this fill effect here. So for a moment I will lock it because I want to switch to my logo composition and take over a color from my logo. So now let's select this color picker and let's select one of these green colors here. Perfect, now I can go back to my subtitle and you see this is a little, a little bit too bright so I make this a little bit darker, a little bit less saturated. Probably something like that. Okay, can unlock this again and can move on to my render comp and check the result and I think it looks pretty good. It fits my logo quite good. Okay, so the next possibility you have is you can change the setup here. If you take a look at the render composition right on top here, you can find the setup layer and on the setup layer in the effect controls panel, you can find two options. The first one is the paper texture on off checkbox. So if you uncheck this, you see that you get rid of all these paper textures. So the paper texture is visible in the background and it also has an influence on the look of your logo. If you activate it, you see that it looks like it is printed on paper. And if you deactivate it, you see we get rid of this paper texture. The second control we have got here is the background color control. So you can change, of course, your background color if you want. And this works for 
the paper texture version, and of course it also works with no paper texture. Okay, let's undo the color change here quickly. And this is more or less it. Now you're good to render it out. Of course, if you want to use some audio, then you can put your audio track into this audio composition. You could also drag it directly into the render composition. Okay, so this is it with the customization. I hope that you like this template, that you enjoy it, that you can create some cool intro animations with it. I uh, thank you very much for watching. I uh, also thank you very much for purchasing the template if you already did so. If not, you can find this template on VideoHive. The link to the file is in the video description. If you have any further questions, then feel free to drop me a mail through YouTube or through my VideoHive profile or also, of course, through mail. So have a nice day and I really hope to see you soon. Goodbye. Thank you.